way before Michael mm. Adams. And that was Robert Jr. Lockwood doing Little Boy Blue. And that was around... I think Muddy Water started about in 46 or 47 mm. or something. Well, and I'm talking to Robert Jr. Lockwood right now. Uh, stepson of Robert Johnson. A uh, person that's played with practically every important blues harmonica player who ever lived, Little Walter, both Sonny Boy Williamson's, and one of the most tasteful and fine blues guitarists of the post-war period. Welcome to the show. Dave Griggs, Dave Griggs also, also with us. Uh, you want to fill us in, like, some of your the listeners, like, bas the basic uh, biographical information, like where you were born, all that? I was born in Arkansas, Mariaville. Arkansas. And I grew up in Helena, Arkansas, in St. Louis, Missouri. And when did you start playing? I started about, the, about 14, turning 14. I started playing professionally at about 16. Who do you uh, first listen to? Robert Johnson. Only. Yeah, he was a great one. Yes, he was. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to, like... I was over like uh, Robert Jr.'s house in like last October, I believe, and we were discussing some of like some of the people in Mississippi who we might have heard of. I would mention Tommy Johnson, who did a version of uh, Big Road Blues, a song which was later recorded by the Mississippi Sheiks as Stop and Listen Blues, and eventually Howling Wolf has done it as Smokestack Lightning. Yeah. I was trying to see if Robert might remember Tommy Johnson at all. Yeah, I know of him. I never got a chance. Mm. Do you remember the Sheiks ever seeing them? No, I've never seen them either. The Wolf, I imagine oh, you. Oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah. I know I the Wolf. Where'd you uh, wolf first... Wolf was over at his house a few months ago. Yeah. Was he in a city? Yeah. yeah, he came by here about three months ago, wasn't he? Yeah. They was down at a festival in, in uh, uh, Washington. He and Sunny Man Slam. He stayed about three hours. Did he need some help, or was his car broke down or something? No, he came. He stopped trying to pick up a bass player. Oh, I see. Yeah. <clears throat> Where'd you first meet him? Howlin' Wolf. First met Howlin' Wolf in Mississippi. What was he doing then? He was in '36. He was playing, playing guitar mm -hmm. then. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, was he by himself, or was like he... playing by himself? Yeah, he traveled with your stepfather uh, for a while. Well, I didn't know about that. Yeah, and he also, uh, well, like he was like he was Sonny Boy Williamson's brother-in-law or something like yeah. that, was it? Was he? Uh, what sort of thing was he doing back then, music-wise? He's playing the blues on the guitar. Uh, Joe Williams, Big Joe Williams, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had a tune out called Baby Forty Nine Highway. Oh yeah, I think we have that. Yeah. We have yeah, it. Yeah, well, you can, you can play that. Yeah, I'll play for you like a little bit later. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, 49 Highway was a was a hit at that time. Howling Wolf was walking a chair all the way across the house with it. <laughs> yeah, he, he did played, he sit in the chair played, then? Played the guitar just like he played the harmonica. And did he sit in the chair playing then? Yeah, walking all the way across the house. <laughs> did he howl as much then? Was he the wolf then? No, not really. Uh, He's always had that funny voice. Yeah. yeah. When when did he start? Do you know when he started uh, playing harmonica? When it? No, not mm. really. Mm. Well, when I noticed how when I noticed how we were playing harmonica, I think it was about forty, forty six, forty five or forty six. He had a band in West Virginia. Mm. And I noticed him playing harmonica. I always I had always known him to play the guitar. Broadcasted out of West Memphis for a long time, about two, three, four years, I think. When did you first start playing with uh, Walter? Uh, I started working with Walter. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four. Little Walter, Little Walter Jacobs. So people out there might not know who we're talking yeah. about. Fifty-two. Mm -hmm. Greatest harmonica player that ever yeah. lived. Nineteen fifty-two. Mm -hmm. for, for what? Nine years? Is that? Until 1960. Mm -hmm. What a trip that must have been. Yeah. <laughs> what was like, uh, did you ever work with Wolf? Or you just like 
Did you ever like work with him at all? Like you work with I know. Not really, no. Uh, I've sit in a lot of sitting in with him. I never really worked with him. Mm -hmm. I worked with I think I played the book about twice in my life. Twice or mm -hmm. three times. Something had happened to Hubert played in his place. Yeah, Hubert someone, he's like a very unknown guitarist, mainly because he's yeah, he's just I'm a supporter. Sure. He's quite like from the records I've heard he's quite good. Yeah, uh, he come from underneath too. Yeah. Once they came. You with Little Walter for nine years. Mm-hmm. When'd you? How'd you first get to play with him regularly? Well, uh, he needed a guitar player, <laughs> and I didn't want to play. <laughs> I don't like no harp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just don't like him. Was that it? Was that the studio thing you were telling me about? Uh, where where uh, the guy that was recording Walter didn't want. To, to have you play with him, but Walter did or something? No. Walter needed a guitar player. He had the two Miles brothers with him at first, Dave and Lewis. And Lewis quit. Oh. So he didn't have a guitar player, and he begged me to help him. And uh, I've known Walter, I guess, maybe from about 12 years old. Up. So, uh, Rather than see him stranded, I went on and helped him, and I ended up helping him nine years. He wouldn't try to replace me, you know. Uh, his style changed changed a little bit after I got with him too. What were you doing when you, when he asked you to play? Like, who you, were you playing with anybody else, or you like just sort of on your own? No, I was. I wasn't playing with anybody. Mm -hmm. I was just gigging. Why did Louis Myers quit? Just wanted to get his own thing going on. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. You said you knew Little Walter since, since he was 12. Where did you uh, first run into him? Louisiana, Arkansas. What was he? He was playing then? Or you were playing and he came to see No, him? he was just a little kid uh, away from home. Didn't want to work. Trying to play the harmonica. And uh, every place I'd go and play, I'd look up and he'd be there. <laughs> I used to say he never, he would never make a good musician, but he, he did. His time was bad, just like B.B. King's was. It was real bad. When he started, you Walter. Know, wait, yeah, his timing. Yeah, it when, was bad. When he started. Yeah. Well, he it was definitely. bad. It was bad when he got with Muddy Waters, but he kept playing with blues blues players until he finally got a guy together, yeah. you know. But it was bad. No one got it together like he ever, like he did. Really good. What was it like playing, like, what sort of, uh, you know, like, any memorable experiences? Well, everything I've done with Walter was my own version. I, I didn't, it wasn't no strain to me. I don't mean, like, playing, like, did any anything really strange happen, like, when you were playing with him? Like, did, like, uh... One night, you were, like driving maybe some other city, and like the car broke down or something, and you had to no, push it. No, we didn't have that much. We didn't have things like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that all ever happened. We had trouble about twice out of nine years. I was driving my own car one time and threw a rod, and he pulled me to the next city. And around a long while, about three years after that, I. A wheel bearing went in the wagon. Dilo and I stood on the highway for about two days. <laughs> yeah. What sort of person was he to work under? Walter? Oh, yeah. He was a nice fellow. He was nice. Because he was like, he played in Europe with Hound Dog Taylor and somebody else, and he, was, he wasn't very happy with them, from what I've read. He was very upset. How could he them. be happy playing with somebody who don't know nothing about his material? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do anybody like that. No way in the world I would care that man over there would tail on somebody. You know, those, those fellas don't play nothing like his style. Just like he'd done better playing by himself. Yeah, like the reports of like he'd be uh, sitting in a bar with just a drink in his hand and then he'd get the harmonica up to his mouth and just play some things and like it'd be... Same people heard him at a concert like, and they were very disappointed and heard him play by himself and they were really amazed. It was like, fantastic. He played, like I read somewhere, they said he played like he could play in three keys and one hop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A Sonny Boy, too. Sonny Boy kind of taught Walter, too. Which one? The, the last one. 
Not John Lee Williams, yeah. the last one. Yeah. Here's another one I got, another guy who crossed into your life. B.B. King, you met B.B. in Memphis, didn't you? Uh-huh. And I want to tell, like, listeners, like, uh, how you, like, how you first got to meet B.B. King, like, what the relationship between you was till we recorded. Well, I had been, uh, I had been, been broadcasting and making records before B.B. started, so he knew a lot about me, and I didn't know anything about him. And I finally ran into him someplace while he was playing down in Arkansas. And he was sounding so bad. I went went out there with the intention of sitting in with him, but he was sounding so bad. <laughs> I left my stuff in the car. And he begged me to help him play. So I finally went out and got it. And I ended up staying with B.B. about a little better than two years. I remember when I was at your apartment. Well, excuse me one second. Uh, this is Dutchman, and this is WRUWFM, Colored Blues, name of the show, and I'm talking with... Robert Jr. Lockwood and Dave Griggs, and right now we're in the middle of discussing B.B. King. You t told me, like, when I was at your house about B.B.'s first recording session, how, like, uh, he wanted, like, use, like, a trio, and you, you suggested they have a big band because uh, he couldn't get the changes right. Yeah, his sponsor wanted him to have a trio. And uh, I told him if you give him a trio, he wouldn't last long. So, I, so he decided to let him have a band of eight pieces. And all those fresh records what B.B. made, you could tell that his time was real bad. The band would be in one place and he'd be in another. Like the first records were for Bullet, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Miss Martha King and those things. Well, we got some... Rather early B.B. King. These are like uh, from an album. What's the on, name of some of those? Uh, A New Way of Driving, The Other Night Blues, B.B. Boogie. Yeah. B.B.'s Blues. Yeah, B.B. Uh, Boogie. That's one of the first ones. I got my, I Gotta Find My Baby. Here's something which is a little bit more, I think, better done. Uh, this is like uh, suggested to me a little bit like Elmore James and just like he was trying to play. He could never play slide. But like he tried to get the sound. No, oh, he he never did play with a slide. But he tried to get the sound with uh, using his hand. Try to approximate that. Well, I don't know. But like this is something called. I always felt like he uh, he was playing between T Bone Walker and somebody. Yeah. He was influenced a lot by T Bone. Yeah. Well, also by. Well, it's the first man Elmore, ever start bending by strings. Him. Led by Elmore. Booker White's his cousin, but like... Yeah. Uh, T-Bone was... Uh, D.B. was recording before Elmore was. Yeah, I know, but like he... I guess he heard B, uh, Elmore. Nah. Nah. Uh, please find my baby, though. Like, it, he was... It's definitely... <coughs> not, I guess my broom, the guitar on that. Oh, yeah? I never heard that. Well, B.B. was recording before That's My Broom came yeah. out. Maybe that was one he thing. He was before yeah. Elmore. Yeah. Died. He tried to get that, I mean, like he couldn't play the slide, so he'd like trill his fingers. Sure. Yeah. You first did that like around forty-three or forty-four for Bluebird, didn't you? Forty. How did you get to record? How How did you get to do your first recordings? Well, Doctor Clayton and I was living in St. Louis in nineteen thirty-nine. Let me to explain. Doctor Clayton yeah. was. Uh, piano player wasn't it? No, he didn't play just, nothing. Just, just sang. That's right. Yeah. And uh, we decided to come to Chicago to record some records. And we came to uh, to record for Decca recording. Uh, the the promoter was named Mayo Williams. And uh, after we got we when we got to Chicago, Mayo Williams was in New York City. So uh, Luster Marrows went crazy over Dr. Clayton. So Dr. Clayton recorded for Lester Melrose. Was Melrose a producer, recording? Yeah, producer? he was a producer for R.C. Victor. Oh. Did you just walk in and uh, say you wanted to record? Or? No, not really. Well, uh, we found while all the all the guys rehearsed, and uh, while the promoters would you know would be every once in a while, and then they ran into Clayton. So Clayton. 
kind of opened the door for me. I didn't want to record for, for R.C. and Victor. And uh, after the dude had me play, he finally came to my hotel room and begged me to record for him. I finally accepted it. At that time, you wasn't getting nothing for a, rec- a session. Who did you... Uh, $25 for mm-hmm. a record. Who did you want to record for? Decker. You, you did want to? Yeah. Any reasons? Well, we was introduced to Decker before we came oh. to Chicago, yeah. Was Mel Rose the, the <laughs> cat that gave you the hard time about... about uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what was this? <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't want to pay me nothing. Why not? He wanted to pay me $25. So I, I recorded with uh, Clayton on Clayton's first five rec- records, and uh, I've done two records for on my own. Wait, wait, were you on anything like Pearl Harbor Blues or something like that? Pearl Harbor Blues, Got to mm-hmm. Find My Baby. Uh, That's a thing. Uh, she don't stop. It's uh, Got My Murder, My Baby. She don't stop cheating and lying. Did he? He wrote his own songs. Yeah. And like you told me, like you did too, a lot. I've seen several places suggestions that like Take a Little Walk was a song your stepfather did originally, and you got it from him, but like, uh, that's your song, right? Or Take a Little Walk with Me? Yeah, I wrote that. But uh, my stepfather made, recorded something, uh, something similar to that called uh, Sweet Home Chicago. Sweet Home Chicago. Yeah, which he... Uh, yeah. Which is sort of, you ever hear of That Coke? was his style. You ever hear of Coke? Yeah, I know, because I think that's why a lot of people yeah. feel that. Uh, you've heard of Kokomo Arnold. Yeah. Uh, he was, he played... Uh, I never really knew him, but yeah, he, he played with he, the slab. Yeah, he, he did Kokomo Blues, which is before. Yeah. Which is, he died, he was living in Chicago, he's a country blues artist, whatever. I yeah. never really got a, got a chance to see him. Well, <clears throat> getting back to the album with Span, uh, how, did, how did that album happen? Span and that? Yeah. Uh, it was three of us. Span, St. Louis Jimmy, and myself. And uh, Span called me and asked me, would I go and help him do a session? And uh, I agreed to. And I didn't. I wasn't supposed to, to play nothing, to sing nothing. Yeah. And after I got to uh, New York, the promoter asked me, he said, don't you want to put three or four tunes on, on the album? So I, I agreed. You said yeah. <laughs> was St. Louis Jimmy on this album? No, he wasn't on that. He he cut an album himself. No, oh. by himself. That's 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 a that's a record uh, album that I've been trying to find. I ain't never found it. Was he yeah, the same people? For the same candid, people. candid recording. I don't know if it was ever issued. The uh, they made like candid was like a a label uh, connected with Cadence, which was a. Everly Brothers and some other people like that recorded for. Heavy. It was an offshoot. They had some hip, they had some jazz too, like uh, early uh, Cecil Taylor album with oh, yeah. Archie <laughs> Chef, like if you know anything really avant garde jazz. When we, cut, when, when we cut that album, it was, it was the first time I got a chance to see uh, what this little dude done made a uh, uh, Mister Earl Garner. It's the first time I got a chance to see him. This was recorded in New York City, wasn't it? New York, yeah. When was this fan album recorded? It was recorded in 60, 59, I think. 59 or 12 years old, that album is? Yeah. Yeah. It's been... uh, 59 or 60. That must be a reissue of it. Yeah, this is a reissue. It's been a... Oh, yes, a reissue. It's been a collector's item. It's not not on a... The original label. It was on the canvas label. Barnaby... What is that now? Barnaby is like Andy Williams' bought out mm-hmm. all the uh, masters of Anthony Williams Andy Williams TV the TV yeah. guy he bought out because he was originally also on Cadence you know the other label no food he bought all the masters and he's been reissuing them on Barnaby which is distributed by Columbia so mm-hmm. Andy Williams is behind this album yeah uh-huh. once you call the dude up say hey. yeah that's right <laughs> Right on. Just call, ask for the sweater department. What do you, yes. yeah, what do you think of the album? I mean, like yourself on the album. Yeah. Pardon? What What do you think of the album? You mean this one? Yeah. Well, I would say it's okay, but I mean, uh, it ain't. It wasn't done like I'd like for it to be done. Yeah. So it's Otis's album. I like I like more pieces. Yeah. 
I mean, by being Otis and album don't mean anything. Yeah. It's just I like more pieces than two pieces. Who did Otis produce it? <clears throat> I mean, that, that two piece thing was his idea, right? Well, I don't, well, I don't know whose idea it was. But uh, anyway, after we got into New York, I thought we were going to have at least a bass player, you know, yeah. and a set of drums. Well, you did all right. So the dude say he just yeah. well, I just want I just want what you got. Yeah. I think for uh, what you're going to do in that case. I think for an uh, album by a piano player, though, especially like if you want to focus with a band, you miss a lot of like, especially like the bass, and you, you can miss some of like his playing. So, I, and considering this was Otis's album, I think they tried to feature him as much in his piano playing in all its aspects, which is probably why they just had him and you. Yeah, there's a certain person. Well, see, in the be- in the beginning, it was supp- only supposed to yeah. been Otis Span anyway. Yeah, he did. The man just asked, begged me to, to put something on there. If I had something, he said, "Why don't you put something on the album? Maybe that'll break the monotonous, you know." Mm-hmm. So I decided to. I agreed to put something on there. But in the beginning, it, well, I was just supposed to play. I wasn't supposed to yeah. sing nothing. What do you think of Otis as a pianist? Oh, he was good. He was. He was great. Mm-hmm. I got to meet him about uh, two years ago in New York City. He was playing by himself. Dixon had an all-star group also. They were playing at a place called the Electric Circus. Yeah. You know, like they had blues yeah. concerts there for about six weeks, and I got to see him, and I got wow. to meet him. Beautiful. He's like one of the warmest, nicest people. You know, oh, he's a nice guy. I talked to him about 14 months ago. He was uh, getting down. He never heard his self, that's so. yeah. Never done nothing to anybody. He was gigging down at a place in Youngstown where I was, I gigged right right after that. He was playing with Sam Lee and uh, James Cotton and Lucille, his wife. Yeah. And I was asking him, uh, like so many keyboard men have trouble playing in different keys where like 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 you and I are going to play guitar in E or A yeah. or B and, and a keyboard Dude, man might have a rough crying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... I asked Spen if he had any difficulty playing in different keys, and he said, what keys? What are you talking about? <laughs> and he says, no, man. He says, that's what they're there for, is to play. You know, he just tore it up. Great guy. He thinks I'm dead. You Who's better this? call him up. Who's this? Andy Check Williams. him out. Andy oh, Williams. yeah, we've been sort of talking during the music. Just shucking and jiving, passing it around. <laughs> you uh, Hi, Jackie. I might as well identify what I played. That was Sonny Boy Williamson, Rice Miller doing Mighty Long Time. Before that, Muddy Waters doing Hard Day Blues, I believe it was, his famous first session he ever did. And we started off with Jimmy Rogers doing uh, That's All Right. And those are all three people pretty much associated with uh, Chicago blues. Pretty, pretty big names. Uh, how, how 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 big an influence on everybody else in Chicago is Muddy? How big an influence? Yeah, like how, did he affect many people's styles? Well, I would I would think not. I wouldn't think so. Probably a lot of I young mean, white who, dudes. Who yeah. plays like? I don't know nobody who plays like Muddy Waters. I don't mean now. I mean like the early fifties. Because you, I heard. I well, heard, even back then, I don't know any. I didn't know anybody who played like him. You know. Not really. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would think that the dude, could, you know, uh, came up with something of his own. You know, he picked out yeah. something that he could do. You know, and just went on and done it. That was the beauty, I think, of that era. Uh, well, even now, I mean, like everybody has their own uh, yeah their own way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, like I've heard a number of recordings, so some from Chicago by artists, very much like some of Muddy's records for chess. Especially some, like, there have been some things down Memphis area by... Well, a lot of young artists yeah. have tried to do things yeah. like like him since uh, since he got established, you know. That, that, that'll that always happen. Oh, Did yeah. you, you ever play with Muddy besides Jim? Yeah. I played on some of his recordings. Like, which ones? And... Well, I don't know if I know. Mm. <laughs> A long time ago. Yeah. Oh, it looked like to me, I would look like I played on uh, 16 years old or something. 19 years old? 19 years old or something. Yeah, I remember that. Got ways just like a baby child. Yeah. I played on more than one recording session with him. Did you, besides recording? 
Besides recording, did you like uh, play with him in a? You got live too. I came. I came here with Muddy twice. Before you settled down. At Gleason's. Yeah, that was a uh, bar. Could you just, like tell people Glee what Gleason's was? It used to be a uh, blues bar in Cleveland. Yeah, the only yeah. blues spot. I used to go there. And I, <coughs> I first this is blues. This is blues. BB King, Jimmy B. All yeah, everybody guys. used to come in that place, man. Well, then it, it yeah. went into a place called House of Blues. I guess it was a different management. It got really oh, nasty. Whoever it, 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 it was, couldn't, didn't know how to. That's when the jungle warfare came out clear. You have, you have, you have to know how, what, what the business consists of to be successful with it, you know. Well, like, I, I went in there when it was Gleason several yeah, I know. times. Several Gleason, times. Gleason was beautiful. He was a nice guy, man. Better believe Were you, uh, what type of, like, any, like, muddy, how did he strike you, like, personally, outside of his music? Oh, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. What sort of things would he play when he was at a, when he played a bar? Like, I've heard his records, and I've heard him play to, like, white audiences, Basically, you know, like at a at a festival at Central Park in New York City, the Shaper yeah. thing they have there every summer. But like, I've never heard like him in a club playing, especially to a black audience. Well, but, yeah. but the Waters, you, but the Waters usually don't play nothing but his yeah. own material. Yeah, he did things like, he Gucci like a, man, nineteen years old. He ain't like a lot of other artists. Yeah. He only only do his own material. I've never heard him do nothing by anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was doing some Willie Dixon stuff. Well, I mean, uh, he done some stuff that Dixon wrote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's still his 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 uh, idea of doing it. Oh yeah, his interpretation. That's of right. Yeah. And it's his record. I mean, just Dixon wrote it. That's all. Yeah. Well. Wh but I mean, like uh, tunes that I wrote, like "Take a Little Walk with Me." You never hear him do none of my tunes. No, he he won't do any tunes that somebody has already recorded. That's he right. does some of your stepfather's songs. Why? Right. He's recorded some of your stepfather's songs, even though they might be credited to him or Willie Dixon, like Walking Blues and Kind yeah, Hearted Woman. I know. Yeah. Jimmy Rogers, another guy, he was with Muddy for several years, and he like went off on his own, and he started playing again. Like, uh, when did you? Like, when did, when you did he start playing again? Uh, about I guess last six, seven months. He's playing with who are we talking, Little John? With Johnny Jimmy Rogers. Rogers. Jimmy oh. Rogers. With Johnny Little John. Uh, Johnny Little, you ever heard of Johnny Little John? Yeah. He's a slide guitarist, and uh, he plays in, uh, like Elmore James played later in his life. Mm -hmm. And he also plays in a BB King single note guitar mm -hmm. style also. But he's pretty, he's pretty good. And like Jimmy Rogers has been playing with him sometimes, and I guess, I think sometimes on his own too. Uh, when, like, uh, did you ever like play with him at all? Jimmy Rogers? Yeah. I went to Jimmy record too. I'm trying to think of what it was. Did you know he played with Walking Eddie Boy? by myself, I think. Eddie Boy. Yeah. You got a tune out of Walking Eddie. by myself. Yeah, with Walter H wait, Walter Horton on the harmonica. I think I played him. Yeah. Man. That was a big hit. That was like yeah, it was like it's probably his last. You know, was, we have a maybe get to it a little bit later. Yeah. But like he was. Like those recordings he made, like I think, are some of them even better than Muddy's because they just they swing. They just uh, what Jimmy could sing, he always could sing. Yeah, good. good singer. What about his guitar playing? He seems like singing in a well, very he play all right, play okay. In a sort He's of not a, flashy. Yeah, I mean, he just play. He plays something like Jimmy Reed, you know. Simple. Only he plays better than Jimmy yeah. Reed. He plays like so it's to me it sounds. Somewhat simple, but not in his, you know, derogatory sense. Well, he to, picks the guitar. Yeah. He picks it with his fingers. No pick. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He plays like the opposite act, like I play some jazz. Yeah, yeah, like, I, it strikes me like that. Like, yeah. he and you and, like, Louis Myers and yeah. Eddie Taylor, they're, like, the, to me, like, about the best guitar players to back a harmonica player. Like, you don't like playing with a, a harp, but, like, still, like, I've, I've yet to hear anybody yeah. who can make anybody... Make any hard player sound that good. Played nine years with one dude and you couldn't <laughs> stand the harp, huh? Uh, what about, studying, what <laughs> about that dude? That dude would go into a thing, man. Whenever I say, "Well, man," I say, I, I'm, I'm, gonna have, "I'm gonna be splitting after the next two weeks." And Who he would? Walter go into a thing, man. When I when I finally quit, he just didn't think it was real, you know. He, what he felt like I was his daddy, man. After nine years, you finally finally just quit him. Well, I mean, everybody was wanting to raise. He wanted 
he paid, wanted to pay me anything, but he didn't want to get nobody else nothing, you know. And the dudes were looking to me. And he, yeah, and he left it up to you to keep the band together. Yeah, so I mean, the dudes are looking mm -hmm. at me for, for more money. That's jive. Yeah, jive. For, uh, <laughs> Alp, Albert Ayler, the... Uh, you heard well, I mean, I was, going, I was going to stop working with Walter because he didn't want to add a precision bass in the first place. You yeah. mean electric bass? Yeah. That's a was he using? Yeah. What was he using? Two guitars and the drums and you? Yeah, probably an upright bass. No, no, no. Yeah, just, just two guitars and drum and hop. Like one guitar would play the bass. That was part. okay until that, until that bass got popular. When the bass got popular, sure. he added the bass to it, man, and never looked back. Yeah, when I first started, I, we were doing two, two, two guitars, guitars and drums. Yeah, that's right. For a long time. That's right. Long time. But you know, but I never was too comfortable with it. Yeah, I know. And that's, I see. never did like it. Never did really like it, man. It was all right when we started because nobody was playing bass at that time. Yeah, they was upright basses, man. Oh, I, oh, I didn't want the only upright bass players I knew were making a difference. Me, man. I, I, like I, 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 I never did dig it without a bass. <laughs> never. Uh, I just have a question about Albert Ayler, who died recently, was a member of the avant garde jazz, played with Little that. Walter. Played Ooh. saxophone. Yeah. Albert Ayler. Albert? Albert Ayler. He, he lived in Cleveland. He was from Cleveland. He, he was, uh, he's had albums. He's like very avant-garde, far-out jazz. Oh, is he the dude who uh, uh, they found in New York? Yeah. Hudson River. Wow. Like he played with, uh, I like, I remember reading something by somebody in Canned Heat who said, like, Ayla did play with Little Walter. Yeah, and, like, play well, that dude, that dude who played with Walter, man, he left here with me. It was two of them. It was that dude and a, <coughs> and a, and a as alto and a tenor player. And Ayla came to Cleveland with you? They, they stayed with us about, I don't know, they, they stayed with us about a month. Oh, I mean with Little about Walter? Six, about six weeks. With Little Walter? I think we sent them home from Kansas City. They were bad? No, they didn't go bad. We just didn't need them. Yeah. Well, you, uh, getting back to you and Walter, you finally wound up quitting him? Yeah, I finally wound up quitting. Well, how long was it before you went with Eddie Boy then? That was after Little Walter, right? I was with, with uh, Eddie Boy at first. For, before Little Walter? So I think five long years is before, like, there's like 51 or 52. Yeah, I was with wow. Eddie first. And when I, uh, when I left uh, Walter, I wasn't with anybody. I, I was just a... Uh, just gigged, and I was, you know, that's the funny thing about that city. I was playing five and six, from five to seven nights a week, and wasn't playing directly with anybody. When uh, when you were playing in Walter's band, it was called the Jukes, wasn't it? Yeah. Jukes. Were you on the, on the record, Juke? No, no, no. That was like the... I wasn't on that. That's the Miles Brothers. Yeah. was on Juke and uh, Amino World, Ken O'Rourke, much longer. I think he'd done two records yeah. with yeah. Who played uh, on Roller Coaster? Bo Diddley. Bo Diddley and Walter. I wasn't on that either. Okay. I want to get off a little Walter for a second. Back to like, guy we just the last record I played, John uh, Rice Miller, Sonny Boy Williamson. Mm -hmm. he, he was the second one. Wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he claimed he was the first. Well, he was the first harmonica player because he was playing before John mm -hmm. Lee was playing. But he but, wasn't uh, calling himself Sonny Boy. That's though. right. He wasn't called Sonny Boy. When did you, when'd you first meet him? With your stepfather? Well, I met Sonny Boy in 35, 36. Last 35, I think. It's a long time, man. That was before I was a gleam of my daddy's. What was he up? What was he doing those days? Sonny Boy, he was playing. With who? By himself. Travel? Oh, like, he wouldn't use a guitarist? You mean just like, uh... Playing by himself. Yeah. Uh, I understood that that uh, Robert Johnson had played with him uh, in several occasions. Mm -hmm. They'd run into one another and two gigs together, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wolf even says that uh, they supposedly made a recording session, but nothing is yeah. known about it. Mm -hmm. Imagine oh, if that was ever found. Oh. I was reading in uh, Blues Unlimited a few months ago. Uh, a good friend of mine, Jimmy Lavis, told, uh, told me that uh, the people who are behind... Mike Ledbetter and like that. Mm -hmm. They found out that there that someone sometime somewhere had made sound movies of Elmore James. Oh and, yeah, I and saw they, that. They were offering some 
If they could those could be able to fee for I know so that a it, lot of money just just for for the information leading to to the the knowledge of the whereabouts yeah. of these things. Man. Yeah, if the wow. tapes are ever found, those would be quite valuable. Oh yeah. But like, uh, what type of thing was Sonny Boy playing back those days? Same things as he recorded? No. Well, the music wasn't exactly like it is now. It was different. It was. Was it more like in a line of like? tunes. Sonny Terry. Yeah. No, well, Sonny Boy never was that. Life far back. Well, Sonny yeah. Terry's more country. Yeah. Uh, Sonny Boy was. Well, Sonny Boy's style close. really never really changed too much. Yeah. But I mean, normally I would say he was pretty close to. He stayed in a pretty close circuit as of all the things that he's ever done. Was uh, listenable, listenable, you know. Mm. When did you When did you work with him? I started playing with Sonny Boy in 1936. For how long? Oh, about four, about three or four years. Just traveled throughout the South, basically. Mm. Mississippi. Yeah. Arkansas, Louisiana. You were like big influence on his on the guitarist. He got to replace you, Joe Willie Wilkins, weren't you? Well, that was way before Joe Willie. Joe Willie came after. Joe Willie came to Sonny Boy about uh, 40, 45, 44, 45, something like that. By that time, you were both doing shows in all. You were both doing. I had my own band then. Were you playing during the war, World War II? Yeah. Did that body even, did it affect you? Yeah, man, we couldn't get tires, man. We what? We couldn't get tires for automobiles. Oh. <laughs> I managed to get them, though. Did couldn't get tires, couldn't get gas either. Oh, yeah. They were All that was racing. Racing, John. That's right. Yeah, ooh. And many times I paid $10 for a tire to take me to the gig. Blow out. Did you play like with anybody like Tommy McClellan or any of the... Uh, no. Bill Brunzi? Did you ever play with Brunzi, Robert? No, I Bill? never really played with Big Bill. I, you knew him, did you? Yeah, very well. You knew him very well? Yeah. Yeah, I used to try to get Bill to accept some of my ideas. He always say, can't teach the old dog new tricks. <laughs> Uh, That's the way I think about you, man. Yeah, and I got news for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got news for you. You've been like, when did you like start recording with Sonny Boy? When he, when did you start recording with him? Because you had him playing with him, I guess. For about I started recording with Sonny Boy about fifty-three or four, something like that. For chess. Yeah. Chester. When he came to chess, that's when I started recording with him. All the others he made, Elmo James, I think, was on them. He was, Elmo James is on the first album. Yeah, Elmo and No, he was Joe on Willie. Elmo's first record. I think Joe, I think Joe Willie was on. Yeah, Joe Willie was on album. most of his trumpet. Joe Willie and Willie Love. I've got an old 78 by Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Cat's Hop or something like that. Instrumental as well as uh, something that's on an album. I like it. It's too much. Play a little thing by his stepfather now. Okay. Robert Johnson. This is something called, this is something you yourself did. Rambling on, rambling on my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he played all of them. 